everyone, Jen from Modified Macros here, and I'm going to go over the ultimate ketogenic diet beginner's guide today. There is a lot of information out there on the internet, and starting the ketogenic diet and lifestyle can be completely overwhelming. So this video is going to be your go-to guide on how to start your ketogenic diet with the easiest way and with the less amount of stress. I am so excited for you to be starting your ketogenic journey. It has completely changed my life. Besides losing 45 pounds, I have also been able to come off of my thyroid medicine as my Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disorder, has been completely regulated by diet. I have been able to come off of my postpartum depression medication as of two weeks ago. I was cleared to come off of that and I was on a much higher dosage and it completely just kept decreasing as I kept going through keto. I have cleared up my cystic acne, I had psoriasis patches down the base of my skull, all the way down my back, um, through my thighs. Uh, those are all gone through keto. My arthritis pain has almost completely subsided. I no longer wake up in the morning with burning joints and popping and creaking. That has all gone away because of the ketogenic diet. So I am so excited. Even if you're just on here to get some more info, I am so happy that you've decided to look into this lifestyle. So let's get started on your beginner's guide to the ketogenic diet. You guys are gonna see that there is so much information out there on the internet. It can get very, very overwhelming when you start your journey with keto. I was overwhelmed and I was working very closely with a doctor and nutritionist the entire time and I was still just constantly stressed about it. So let's go over the easiest things first and start your journey. So the first thing that you are going to need to do in keto is figure out what your macros are. And macros is just the keto jargon term, the shortened condensed way of saying macronutrients, which are basically the elements that make up your caloric intake for the day. The big three that we concentrate on in keto, fat, carbs, and protein. To stay on a therapeutic ketogenic diet, you need to have 70% of your calories coming from fat, 25% from protein, and 5% from carbs. That number is going to, all those numbers as far as grams are going to vary drastically based on what your caloric intake is. So my best advice to you is to go and find a keto calculator. My favorite one is this one right here at ruledme.com. It is extremely user friendly and has the best results for all of the different areas that go into calculating what your macros are gonna be. Once you get your macros, I need you to understand that everyone's going to have different macros. You guys, keto is so personal. You can get two people, same height, same weight, same gender, same age, totally different macros because you have to put in underlying health conditions. You have to put in your physical activity. It just, everyone's going to be different. So my first piece of advice to you guys, don't compare yourself to others because this is a very personal journey. That is my favorite part about keto, by the way how personal it is. Every other diet program has lanes, right? And they put you in them and they're like, okay, go. You fit into this category. You're in between these numbers. You take this many points or you get this much food or you eat this many containers. And sometimes you're in that lane shuffling along and you're like, this doesn't really fit. This isn't really working for me. And you're like, well, that's what you got. That's where you are. It's this lane. Keto's totally different, you guys because the ketogenic diet is so personal. I want you to think of it more as you are on your path and I am here as that lantern that you're holding that's just guiding you so that you can see the way on your path. And that's how I'm going to help you through this and that's how your macros are going to help you through this. They are that guiding light to show you how to get through your path in keto. So once you have your macros figured out, you have to decide what type of ketogenic diet style you're going to follow. There are the big three, strict keto, dirty keto, and lazy keto. So here's how I want you to think about it. 
Strict keto is, let's say you are in New York City and you're gonna go to Los Angeles. If you are on strict keto, you have a GPS system that is going to tell you every single second of where you're going. You are going from New York to LA, you are going straight there, there are no stops, you know exactly where you're going. Strict keto, you eat only keto approved foods, you stay usually under 20 net carbs, but that could change depending on your macros, mine is 26. Um, but that's how strict keto works. And then you've got, let's say you're not really into that, let's say that you're more of a back roads type person, you wanna spend the night, see the sights, that's dirty keto. Dirty keto, you are following the ketogenic diet, you are staying within your macros, but you allow yourself to eat some things that maybe aren't keto approved, like low carb items that may have some non-keto approved ingredients like grains or alcohol, wine, it's not really keto. You can kind of fit it in if you're strict, but really you're not supposed to. Um, that's kind of how I want you to think of dirty keto. You're just, you're still staying in your macros, you're just kind of taking the back roads a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit of a longer journey, but you're still gonna get there. And then, lazy keto. Basically, you're in New York City and someone hands you a compass, points west, and you head that way. <laughs> you're not really taking a very strict path. There's gonna be a lot more winding roads, a lot more bumps, but you're still gonna get there, you guys. No matter which one of these styles you pick, you are still gonna get to your destination. It's just a matter of how you wanna get there and be realistic with yourself. I call this group Modified Macros for a reason because it is important that you modify to your lifestyle. If you know that you go out with your friends three times a week and that is important to you, it's ridiculous to try to start a lifestyle that that doesn't fit into. So instead of trying to fit your lifestyle into your new diet, I want you to fit your diet into your lifestyle. Look at it that way. There are so many ways to make the ketogenic diet work for you and have it actually work for you. Because if it doesn't fit in your lifestyle, you're gonna do it for a few months, you're going to miss all the things that you loved, and then you're gonna say, forget it, I wanna go do those things. I wanna go be out with my friends. And on keto, you can do those things, you just have to modify it for your lifestyle. So I want you to keep that in mind. Whatever style of keto you pick, you're still picking a style of keto. You are still on your way to a health and wellness journey that you weren't on before. So the only way that you can fail is if you give up completely. There are um, two other, uh, I guess, styles of keto that are not really keto, but they fall under the keto umbrella. That's a low carb, high protein, and then low carb, high fat. Basically low carb, high fat is where you can still have grains. Um, and they're integrated in, but you are staying relatively low carb, under 50 net carbs, and you are staying a high fat. So, uh, but mostly we're gonna, we're gonna focus on the big three. So once you pick that, so you have your macros and you decide if you're gonna be strict, lazy, or dirty, and that's what those mean, you're gonna hear those in every group that you are in, so get used to it. Now we can move on to how we're going to implement your macros into your day-to-day -day life. <laughs> So this is really important, you guys. Um, intermittent fasting is gonna come up and people are gonna say, yes, you have to do it and it's the best. And it is the best and it does work great with keto. I don't want you to think about it at all for the first six weeks that you're on keto. Not until your body is fat adapted, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a second, because you'll find that your body, when you're getting used to keto, I want you to really adapt to it, get used to the way of eating, and I don't want you to have to feel like you have to fit things into a box and that's what intermittent fasting does so wait six weeks and you might find with me my fasting window came naturally after about six weeks it just naturally evolved so for right now don't even think about intermittent fasting we'll talk about that later for the first six weeks I want you to just focus on getting fed adapted which brings me to the next one keto flu <laughs> Keto flu is something that everyone talks about and dreads. I'm gonna be honest with you, you guys, it's not that bad. It essentially feels like a large hangover with none of the fun beforehand. Your body is essentially expelling carbohydrates and glucose, and if you were like me, I was extremely, extremely carb heavy, and I had an extremely sugar-laden diet beforehand, and I didn't even realize it. Um, you'll have a slight headache, you're gonna feel dehydrated, you're just gonna feel off, 
um, and it lasts anywhere from three days to two weeks. Mine lasted about 10 days and then I started taking um, exogenous ketones and that kicked it out of my system. You can do things to mitigate that. Electrolytes is a big one. Make sure that you stock up on those. You can get them from bone broth. You can get an electrolyte supplement. You can even just add some salt to your water, you guys. It doesn't have to be fancy or crazy. Um, but that's one of the biggest ways. So keto flu is essentially your body ridding itself of glucose, ridding itself of carbohydrates, and starting to become fat adapted, which is where you wanna be. It can take anywhere from two to six weeks to get fat adapted. And that is important, you guys. Being fat adapted works for keto. If you're not fat adapted, you're not gonna be in ketosis and this isn't gonna work for you. So you really have to focus on that. That's why I don't want you focusing on intermittent fasting where you're worried about times. I want you focusing on what you're eating and putting in your body and being intentional with your fats. So what I mean by that is not all fat is created equal. <laughs> I don't want you guys to just eat fat to eat fat. Your first six weeks on the diet when your body's getting used to it, I'm, you can be a lot more lenient with what you're eating. And by that I mean uh, things like fat bombs, um, you know, lots of cream cheese and you know, that type of thing. But as you kind of get fat adapted and your body gets used to it, you're gonna notice that you will have a caloric decrease. Your macros are going to change and you want to change your macros um, based on how much weight you're losing. About every, you know, anywhere from five to 15 pounds, depending on how much weight you're trying to lose. If you have a large amount of weight to lose, which is 30 pounds or more, every 15 pounds, if you have 30 pounds or less to lose, every five to 10 pounds, you're gonna change up your macros. <clears throat> so what do we eat? on the ketogenic diet. Let me show you guys with some pictures exactly what you want to be putting into your grocery carts, what kind of foods you're going to be eating, and show you a really quick way to jumpstart your ketogenic diet. Grocery shopping can be a little overwhelming when you first start keto. The important thing to do is to start reading labels and recognizing things that you can and cannot have. Obviously, almost all processed foods and anything with grains and high in carbs or has sugar in them are out. You're going to start replacing your high carb vegetables with low carb vegetables like leafy greens and anything that really grows above ground like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that type of thing. Condiments, anything without sugar in them, and fruits, we're looking mostly at berries, avocado, and any low carb fruits. But you're really gonna find that shopping isn't as daunting as it seems, because as keto and low carb becomes more and more mainstream, there are so many products out there, you guys, that make this lifestyle easy. I honestly don't ever feel like I am missing out on anything. For all the restrictions that you have in keto, once you get used to it, it honestly doesn't feel that way because you realize you can find almost anything. Beef jerky is something you really wanna check labels on. That is one of the products that you're gonna find a lot of hidden sugars in, so make sure you read your labels. Quest bars are great for keto, but only for snacks and once in a while type things. Don't make it an everyday product. But for those of you who are worried that you're not gonna be able to have your normal things that you would eat, there's almost always a low carb or ketogenic alternative. Electrolytes are gonna be something that you either want to supplement, either by adding salt to your water, bone broth, bullion, or electrolyte supplements. But for the most part, you're going to find that you're eating a lot of foods that you would normally eat anyways. And snacks are definitely not a problem on the keto diet. There is an abundance of them. And when we look at sweeteners, you guys, we have Swerve, you have Truvia, which is Stevia, uh, Monk Fruit, those are the best ones. And you'll also find that going out to eat on keto is much easier than you think it is. For the most part, you're going to be eating foods that you're used to. I've had cakes on keto. I can still have pizza and chicken wings. It's all going to be about making sure that you read labels and just go over what you can and cannot have. Only fill your cart with things that you know are keto friendly. And then fill your pantry with things that you know are keto friendly. Don't let any sugars or carby items lurk in your pantry. And I totally understand if you have kids 
and husbands and wives that aren't on keto, but do your very best to just keep keto foods in the home. You can even have alcohol on keto, you guys. I mean, you're going to love this. I promise.